Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 732. That is 732 of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And I hope you are doing well wherever this live stream may find you. I hope you are doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered, I cannot complain. All good, all things considered, I cannot complain. Hope you're all well, wherever you may hear this lovely, jubbly podcast. It's been a while since I last checked in with y'all. You know how it is. I've been doing a bunch of live streams for the random show, my other world-renowned, world-renowned, world-renowned show. So if you want to see my comments on other things outside of the street wear and the fashion and the music and all that stuff I talk about on here, you want to hear mostly stand-up comedy chat and other bits and bobs, definitely check out Random Show. It's available on most podcast platforms, but I haven't updated it episodes in a while. So if you want to see the actual episodes, check out the YouTube. But I'll start doing the I'll start doing the flipping jiggy. I'll start doing the what's it called it? The I will start doing the podcast things soon for it too. I'll start updating them. But if you want to see the latest one, check it out. I did a UFC 296 live stream. So if you want to see that, please do check it out on my channel. You can find my YouTube channel at, at sign Taz. That's at sign T-A-Z-S, at sign T-A-Z-S on YouTube. Or just type in the Agassino Zynga Show into your YouTube and you'll find my channel and you'll find a playlist on there, all neatly organized into Random Show and the Agassino Zynga Show, all under one lovely, jubbly channel. Hopefully in the end, what I'll probably do, when I get my subscriber count up on my main channel, and the views get up considerably i'll probably split the channels anyway but for now i have them all under one but what i probably i don't know maybe when i hit the fifty thousand subscriber milestone on my on my youtube channel it doesn't really subscribers doesn't really matter but i just want to build up a little bit of a community first on this main channel and then i'll probably split it and put all the comedy random show stuff on the other channel so you can check that out if you need be you know what i mean that's the vibe that's what i'm saying but bring up everybody tuning in those of you tuning in live those of you who are tuning in just via watching this you know after the fact thank you so much for joining me i do appreciate your company um i've just seen a comment here in the chat <laughs> big up um joe roberts is that true big up quailer too i see you wagwan my guy allegedly the 10 minute of shorb guys have made a what did a call in about me for something okay cool that's good to see um good to see that um there's good vibes there I've, i saw a comment actually from one of the guys at 10 minutes of shorb saying that it's all good and stuff and apologizing which he didn't need to to be honest isn't it you know what i mean that he had something to say about what i said about him so it's perfectly fine but it's nice to see that the content community guys on this side of things can be friends and can be cool maybe not even friends just be cordial you know you don't need to lick each other's asses but there's no need for beef because it's kind of redacted you know what i mean um i think most content that revolves around reacting like i do right it's kind of redacted right it's probably the bottom like this stuff that i do is definitely bottom feeder content i'm not fucking painting like i should do i'm not creating my own brand like i should do i'm not a world touring dj like i should be you know all these things that i should be doing i'm wasting my time t talking about people who are currently more successful and richer than me on this live stream of like 100 people only it's probably not the greatest use of my time but it's fun and i enjoy it and obviously you guys enjoy it too but the last thing we should be doing as content creators is kind of you know go going at each other and stuff it's really dumb because we're already creating bottom feeder content we're making the best out of it anyway let's just enjoy it have some funds um you know if we can raise some funds to pay for beers and pizzas and stuff and a little bit of yayo then why not do you know what i mean but let's not make it any deeper than that it doesn't have to get any deeper so it's good to see the 10 minutes of shorbs guy the 10 minutes of shorb guys have a good attitude do you know what i mean i fucking love it because the last thing i want to see is like that infighting because actually as um nj ranger mentioned that no jumper stuff man is so fucking sad to see like how it's devolved i'm sure most of you haven't paid attention to it but i do but essentially the guys who used to be on no jumper the t-rails ad's all those guys have all set up their own channels and their own podcasts and stuff and the the new kind of arc going on at the moment is that they've currently got beef with this girl called stunner girl who's a rapper i'm assuming and maybe also in like an ig baddie i don't really know much about her but she's got loads of followers on social media she came onto one of their shows called back on fig which is hosted by t-rail and um her guy, her boyfriend was asleep on the couch when they were talking. And I guess, I don't know, in hood circles, that's disrespectful. I don't know if that's disrespectful for just people in general. I don't know if it's disrespectful if you bring a guest. If you if, if you're if you invite if if I invite you to my house as a guest and you bring a friend and they fall asleep on a couch, 
yeah, it's going to be annoying, but I'm not going to want to fight them. Do you know what I mean? It's not that deep. But I guess for them, it was deep. They didn't really like it. And then they found out later on that he was on lean or something, right? He was a bit high. Um, so that's fine. That I'm not really too far. That I'm really not too bothered about. Do you know what I mean? But then um, it devolved into some back and forth. And then for some reason, that guy that fell asleep took it a disrespectful that they were kind of mocking him for falling asleep or something. And he decided to turn up outside of T-Row's house. He took a picture outside of T-Row's house somewhere in LA and basically, you know, goading him and kind of, you know, prov a kind of a provocation thing. Basically saying, look, I'm outside. Um, come see me, all this sort of nonsense. So it just goes to show you that there's another side of content creation, another side of podcasting where people get violent and they get physical and it turns into street stuff and it gets, you know, it's just unnecessarily confrontational. And I'm glad it's not like that on the comedy side of things. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that don't like me or don't like uniques and other people and like comedy enforcement and stuff, but they probably keep it to themselves. That's probably how you should do. Do you know what I mean? If you don't like somebody in the content creation thing, just keep it to yourself because the last thing anybody wants is any sort of like infighting. It's a bit lame. The comedians we cover are already lame, right? You already cover super lame comedians. Let's not make it any lamer by infighting i don't want to see that but yeah um big up on 10 minutes of shorbs guy um i'll probably see that content later on when i do random show but for now i'm gonna focus on the agassino zinga show the number one podcast for all your cultural commentary needs so this past weekend i have been watching um one of my favorite series from season one called reacher i'm sure most of you are aware of it it's also based on the books season two recently dropped three episodes and then a new one episode every friday i kind of hate that model i prefer either you drop them one episode per week until the end of the season until the season ends or you just drop the whole season like netflix i hate this like let me give you free and then let me drip feed you after it's fucking annoying but regardless amazon got to do what they got to do to keep the numbers there and engagement and shit but jack reacher is so good man reacher sorry on amazon it's so fucking good and people have described it as dad tv but i'll call it lad tv it's so 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 basic it's just a big hulking dude who's really just right and goes after people who do wrong to others and protects his friends that's basically it and people who can't protect themselves the you know the helpless and said whatever it may be like it starts off amazing episode one he basically um saves some woman that's been carjacked like it's so fucking basic him, him obviously you know um, police work detective work being very attuned to like reading people and whatnot he doesn't he's a man of you know few words as well but i just love the idea that it's so basic in that it's just a big hulking dude who goes around kicking ass and protecting people and stuff and standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves it's absolutely incredible um so far season two i've liked um i was a bit nervous when it started i thought they were going to try and do the whole like it's not about Reacher, it's about his team or it's about the women involved. You know when they try and spin things and try and be like, it's women empowerment. It's like, look, the empowerment side of things is that he's just a big hulking dude who's not a creep, right? He's not an abuser, he's not a bully. Um, you know, the, the only toxic masculinity trait of him is that he clearly doesn't, you know, he's a bit of a loner. He avoids any kind of personal connections and basically prefers to stay on his own. And it's kind of um, sad, I think, in the beginning when it first starts off um, because it kind of, you know reminded me a little bit of me and my tendencies to kind of push people away and kind of stay on my own and not be social and not have a group a good big group social a group sorry i can't even say it i'm fucking not used to it <laughs> it reminded me of myself because he doesn't really have any close connections he purposely pushes people away he lives off the grid no phone no nothing he basically lives via the charity of others to, you know um, hitchhiking rides sleeping on couches and shit on park benches and just kind of you know lives the life of a nomad and um when he gets the distress signal from one of his colleagues in the show um it's quite funny how they do it they kind of send him the distress signal via a little um via uh bank deposit drops on his um account so i think it's like 1060 or something right one of those codes that you do in the army um so then he realizes something's wrong and he calls the number that he knows off by heart and he picks up and you know and, and basically he has a catch-up with the girl that he kind of works with that he's kind of really cool with and she basically tells him all this stuff about their team because they used to be in an army team together right these special investigators who are basically i think army police investigators of some sort and um you know they went on a lot of missions whatever it may be and she basically updates him and says yeah this person's dead this person's married this person this like and he missed out on so much and he's basically like oh why didn't you call me and she basically makes a good point she's like yeah well all these things that happen people life moves on 
and I couldn't and I couldn't like reach out to you because these weren't emergencies. Somebody getting married is an emergency. Um, maybe even a funeral isn't really an emergency either. Do you know what I mean? Like the person's passed away already. It's like, it is what it is kind of thing. So um, it was kind of a realization for him that even though he's important and he played an important role in everybody's life and he feels like these people are his brothers and sisters, their lives go on. They don't stop just to kind of wait for him to come back because he disappears so often. And it kind of reminded me of myself and that, you know, I remember when I first got, when I first jumped on Instagram, I, I remember that was a realization of like how little communication I had with people and how bad I'd been in terms of keeping up friendships, especially from the first kind of big social group I had, which was the group I went with out to fucking New York with um, the guys from Better Never Than Late and stuff and people that used to hang around from that kind of crew. And I remember when I first jumped to Instagram, I remember that was the first realization because I think Facebook was when we were kind of in university and then Instagram was when we all kind of got our first jobs and stuff, right? So it was kind of like our adulthood was Instagram. And I remember logging onto Instagram and seeing all my, all those friends that I kind of knew from the, from before you know, had like new girlfriends, they'd moved, they'd moved to like new places, maybe in some moved to other countries, they'd had, they'd gotten dogs, one of them passed away, it's like, Jesus, I was like, fuck, you know, I missed out on so much, and no matter how much I wanted to reach out and rekindle stuff, it just wasn't going to be the same again, and then I remember another time it kind of broke my heart was when I logged onto my Instagram and I saw those same people meeting up for drinks and stuff, right, and hanging out and shit, like, and I was like, fuck, and this was maybe, I don't know, five, ten years ago, and I didn't get invited, and I was like, at first it kind of hurt, but then I thought to myself, they didn't invite me because they've invited me to other things in the past, and I've always said no, or I've not turned up, so there's only so many invites you can give to somebody and they keep turning you down or they keep ghosting you or they keep flaking before you're like you know what let's not just, let's not count on him so I couldn't take that person I couldn't take it too personally because I already had sort of like given them a hint of what I was on what time I was on whatever so it kind of is what it is but I kind of identified a lot with that with them um, Reacher in this um series I won't be honest but I think so far from the, from the three episodes in it shows that I don't know I think you we're getting the feeling that this is one of those ones where he's going to maybe realize that he needs company. Sometimes being alone all the time isn't good. And he's going to maybe find a balance between being a lone wolf and also being with his family and friends and so, or, so, or being with his friends and maybe his love interest. Because I've got a feeling, most likely, again, spoiler alert if you're not watching anything, but I've got a feeling either Jack Reacher ends up dying or the lady that he's involved with ends up passing away, or the other lady, that's the tech person, whatever, that he's really close with. I've got a feeling some, some, one of those three will die. That'll be like a pivotal part of the whole thing. And then it obviously set up season three. But the main guy in it is an absolute unit. What's his name? I forgot the actor's name. But the actor's name that plays Reacher is perfect casting, man. Because I remember when, um, what was it? What's his name here? Let's see if I can find a name. Bear with me a second as I get the cast up on here. Okay. I remember when Tom Cruise did it, they said Tom Cruise was a bad um, casting because he's so short. But the main guy that plays Reacher in it, his name is Alan Richardson. So Alan Richardson, Rickson. He's so good. He's a perfect cast for fucking Reacher in this movie, for this series, because he's, I think, like six, seven or something. And he's built like a brick shit house. It's absolutely crazy how fucking jacked he is in this. And, you know, it's all natural, of course, right? Um, Just some white rice, <coughs> um, you know, bowl chicken and broccoli, you know, nothing else there at all. Zero. Just a, just big white and fucking jacked. Look at him. Look at the size of this guy, bro. Look at this. Look at the absolute size of him. Absolutely massive. You can't even lie about that. Do you know what I mean? That guy is a fucking unit. And he's six seven or something. Like, that's a fucking unit. Look at him. Absolutely huge. But yeah. Big up Reacher. If you haven't watched it already, please check it out on Amazon Prime Video and stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Moving on. We've also got this post courtesy of Nat Clubs Berlin that I wanted to talk about regarding Berlin as a place because I thought this was a really eye-opening um, conversation to be had here just in general about living in a place like Berlin and living in cities in general where it's all about individual expression, it's all about freedom, it's, it's all about freedom of choice, freedom of, you know, what sexuality, religion, whatever it may be, right, interest, you're kind of left to your own devices in that regard, right? It kind of empowers you to be the best version of yourself. Like, I think London is a good example of it. Obviously, New York is one, obviously places like Berlin and a few others around the world. But this girl had a really good um, opinion 
and a really good perspective on the difficulties of what she's learned growing up in Berlin or living in Berlin for the year. And I thought it was very eye-opening. So I'm going to play it. I think it was this girl here wearing this Banaclava thing. What did you learn in Berlin? So I've been living in Berlin for like a year and a half. I think the number... Actually, let me, let, me, let me replay that one more time. What did you learn in Berlin? So I've been living in Berlin for like a year and a half. I think the number one thing that I learned here is to not give a fuck about anyone or anything and what they think. Um, I guess it's like a learning experience that takes a lot of time. And in Berlin, it's like express way to not giving a fuck. You quickly realize, you know, it's kind of a lonely place, it's kind of a dark place. It's kind of a cold place, also emotionally cold. People are not the most welcoming or the most anything. It's like a lot of places, but I guess here you really have to make your own happiness and you have to be able to do that quite quickly or else you can get depressed and you can fall into that pit, which is not useful. So yeah, I think it's a lot, it's a big self-learning experience and you can make it as deep as you want it to be. I love that perspective from her. I love that perspective from her. That although Berlin is super empowering and free and you can be who you want. And I think that's something I realized too when I went out there. It was really amazing to go to a place where you could basically wear what the fuck you wanted and no one would really bat an eyelid. And I think for me, coming from a place like London where people are very judgmental, in the UK in general, everybody kind of quietly judges you on the things that you're into, the things that you wear, the places that you go to. Um, you know, they always kind of have something to say about it. It's also quite refreshing to go to a place like Berlin, especially a place like nightlife where mostly people just wear whatever they want to wear, right? Freedom of expression is definitely seen on the dance floors of Berlin. It was a real eye-opener to see that because it was not really about what you wore. It was about who you were as a person. It was about the way you were dancing, the way you were communicating, the way you were just kind of embracing and kind of adapting and immersing yourself to the environment and shit. That said way more about the you than your actual clothes. No one gave a fuck about what brand item you're wearing. Yes, style is important, but the labels, all this flashy stuff were important and that was also super sick to see but i like that she said that on the flip side that hyper individuality that freedom is also very almost intimidating and almost a bit lonely right it can be a little bit lonely because everybody's doing their own thing everybody's living in their truth everybody's living in their purpose everybody's kind of going in their own direction steadfastly and if you're not you know doing what you're meant to be doing you could just be left on your own and everybody's kind of on doing their own projects doing their own thing with their own friends whatever it may be living their life finding themselves and you could quickly quickly realize that you're kind of alone and don't really have a big social group i can see that happening because again like i've said like i think i've met way more quote-unquote dance floor friends the times i've been to berlin than any other place i've been to in the world raving but I could also imagine it being day to day again. This is me being a tourist. It's a completely different. I'd, I'd imagine being a Berliner tourist and also living there can be a completely two completely different experiences. But I do think there's something to be gleaned from it in that even though I've met a lot of like dance floor friends, I could also imagine it day to day being a quite a lonely place because everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's an individual in the truest sense of the term, not in like the hipster sense of the term where they're all individuals, but they wear the same thing. No, they're all individuals. Like it feels like in Berlin, people go super out of their way to be different. Like people don't want to look like somebody else. And I think I kind of saw a little bit of that. Um, like when I went to Berlin recently and I had a bit of a bad time where I kind of felt like, a, you know, I was getting kind of vibed out by some of the cool black guys there and girls and shit because it felt like I kind of got that kind of, you know, I kind of got the feeling like a lot of them wanted to be the only cool alternative quote unquote black within their social group right they didn't want to have another british guy come over who was loud and whatnot and doing his thing trying to kind of take up their space but then when i kind of stepped back and i went and i kind of thought about it a bit i was like that makes sense though they've carved out their own little space they've carved out their identity they've finally figured out what their role is in their social group and they're being protective of it that makes complete sense it's completely okay so i kind of understood that that's also part and parcel of living there it's also that kind of i wouldn't say territory it's kind of territorial in that respect of like yeah i'm i, I know what i'm about my friends know what i'm about and i kind of keep that kind of close and i think that kind of works for them all the things going forward but i really did like the way she expressed her opinion on that and i think it kind of made a lot more sense 
in terms of me understanding the berliner sense of my sense you know mindset and how they kind of communicate and navigate around things and stuff it really does make a lot of sense there uh, what are you guys saying in chat um well they're pretty close to scandinavian countries where people will party hard but hard to get to know yeah exactly z good example i'm i i, I used to have a te i don't do it anymore but i used to have a tendency to be like the serial friend adder and follow on instagram type of guy right i'd meet somebody in a rave i'd have an amazing you know super charged and high and drunk connection with them in the fucking bathroom store somewhere over a couple of lines and then i'll be adding them on social media thinking that we're best friends and then be texting them the next day and then they you know they kind of go sing you they don't want to know you anymore and i used to always take that shit personally but i think that's just a common thing that happens in dance like in dance you know nightlife and shit and i think it's not that you know it's not that deep really it's mostly just like you know they're over it the next day the party was a party now it's their real life and they kind of don't want to know you it's completely fine but i do feel like in berlin i've had way more success with that i've had way more success with meeting people in bathroom stores and then meeting them again in fucking restaurants the next time i go or in a bar over a drink it's never, you know what I mean? I, I feel like it's actually worked pretty well in that regard. So there's clearly an ability, I think there's an ability in Berlin to do that. You can meet people in nightlife. It can start off being hedonistic. It can start off being very, um, you know, very kind of uh, leisurely, but then it can develop into a real friendship and a real connection, especially if you share a lot of commonalities and stuff, it can happen. So I love that to be a thing going on in there. But some of the comments on the social media are very, very harsh on this girl. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to play, I'm going to play the video actually one more time and then kind of go over the comments but the comments on the social media on the actual instagram post of her saying what she said were not the most favorable and i wonder if that's a good reflection on how people feel in berlin about what she said or if that's just people trying to be contrarians and or just the nature of instagram in general because instagram comments are known to be super super harsh right it's really funny that isn't it i find that twitter is very snarky and cynical instagram is super harsh um when it comes to comments for some reason facebook is kind of chill and i guess tiktok is a bit of flip of a coin but for some reason instagram comments are really mean <laughs> i don't know why people on instagram are way more meaner but it just is what it is what did you learn in berlin so i've been living in berlin for like a year and a half i think the number one thing that i learned here is to not give a fuck about anyone or anything and what they think um, I guess it's like a learning experience that takes a lot of time and in Berlin it's like expressed way to not giving a fuck you quickly realize you know it's kind of a lonely place it's kind of a dark place it's kind of a cold place also emotionally cold people are not the most welcoming or the most anything it's like a lot of places but I guess here you really have to make your own happiness and you have to be able to do that quite quickly <laughs> or else you can get depressed and you can fall into that pit, which is not useful. So yeah, I think it's a lot, it's a big self-learning experience and you can make it as deep as you want it to be. You know what she said about the point, I just thought about it now, the point that she made about, you have to find what you want, or you have to find things to do, like very quickly, you have to find your purpose, right? Um, I guess find some hobbies is really true because I feel like places like, mediterranean countries like spain i've been to and obviously berlin i've been to as well i feel like those type of places what they do really well is that they have really good work-life balance and i feel like they don't like work to live right they have a really good balance between working and obviously they're leisurely you know fucking out of work fucking activities and shit so i think because of that they do really go to town with the things that they're into whether it's you know going to art exhibitions taking pictures walking their dogs running whatever it is they're really deep into it because they have a real good work-life balance whereas i feel like maybe i don't know where she's from originally she might be american she might be uk i don't really know but i guess in the uk for sure we don't have that so a lot of your free time is spent up going to dr drinking and working basically with your colleagues There's not really much time for hobbies because you're working until 6 or 7 p.m you might go out for drinks after work with your colleagues to drown your sorrows and then that's it really there's no real time to do things to have hobbies to have interests and shit it doesn't really happen most of your interests are kind of revolved around drinking and going to bars or going to restaurants and drinking and shit so that might be the reason but let's actually read the comments here via instagram because i think the comments on instagram were kind of fucking weird it seems like people on the Instagram, on the actual account, didn't really agree with what she said. So on the Instagram page, this is what they said, right? Um, 
the, the, obviously you got her Instagram here. Her name is what's it? Sophis. What's that? That's her name there, right? Sophis Excret. If you want to basically check her out there, it's on the Instagram account called Nat Clubs Berlin, which I've been following for a while. When I first started following them, I think during the pandemic, I think, or maybe just before the pandemic, they were, they were known for taking these amazing 35 millimeter um, pictures, right? These amazing point and shoot pictures, film pictures of people leaving um, Berlin clubs, primarily like Berlin and um, Berkheim and shit. And they were really cool because there was these cool, you know, portraits of people in some of their most blissful moments as they're leaving a fucking nightclub. I fucking loved it. But anyway, let's see what the comment says. The comment says as follows um there's one here in german let's see if i can translate it and it kind of makes sense i see she says here this person in german which is translated says almost two years in berlin and not learned a word of german this is considered rude in the u.s what do germans who live in the u.s for more than two years say people like you have to turn your our city into a day and night party zone with no consideration for people and without interest of the people who live here we are starting to get on our nerves wow so there seems to be a bit of a distrust and a bit of a backlash when it comes to expats and shit um it's weird because this sort of statement these sort of criticisms are odd because it's kind of in part their fault because they allow you to speak english because whenever i've gone to paris it's always incredibly eye-opening and refreshing even when you go to places like madrid um which probably isn't as i think as um englified as maybe barcelona that you go to those kind of places and they only speak spanish and they only speak french you can't really get away with speaking English for the most part because most people don't unless you're in a city centre. So you have to go there with a little bit of, you know, pocketbook fucking, you know, language, you know, and be able to order a beer, be able to ask for directions, bloody, what time is it, where am I, all this sort of shit. It's really important. But their countries and their people are the ones that kind of impose that because they don't indulge English speakers too much. I feel like Germany, for some reason, I don't know why it is, to be especially um, why particularly Berlin, but they are very... I think open to that like you could go to fucking a kebab shop you in in the depths of the ghetto in berlin and you'll find a guy there that speaks english and they'll be happy to serve you because i feel like if you go to a place like paris you go to a place like madrid the bartender is going to be talking to you in in, in in fucking french and spanish respectively you know what i mean they're not gonna even if they know english they're gonna go out their way not to speak it to make you fucking speak french because you're in their fucking country so i think the responsibility lies a little bit in the country themselves they need to kind of impose that you know um but also i think me personally, if I did move to another country, I would go out of my way to learn the language. Personally, if it was me, I would go and learn the language. You know, I wouldn't go there just to go and, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense, really, truly. I'd try to learn it. Even if I lived in fucking Amsterdam, I would do it. I wouldn't just go there and just try and, like, say what I want to say. Just go there and kind of do what I've been doing in the UK. I think part of, like, um, deciding to live in another country is sort of like shedding your old identity and really immersing yourself in the new country that you're in and making that your life basically and kind of embracing all parts of it and I think one of the biggest parts of it is language and really and truly the language barrier and actually lang learning the language of the country you're in can I reckon open up the, the country or in the place that you're in the city you're in in a different way it really does open up people um because you know language is a way for us to understand each other all parts of ourselves um and once you get past that language barrier it can really drastically change your experience and i've learned that myself i remember when i used to do um all my races and shit one time when i went to barcelona um a few years ago to do like a half marathon there that was when i was really hyper um learning or hyper focused and trying to learn sp spanish and i had decent level of spanish not that great but when i went out to barcelona i purposely went um, to one of these um, meetup groups where you did like 15 minutes speaking English, 15 minutes speaking Spanish, right? And you kind of rotated. And I swear to God, I was there for a weekend. I think the race was like on a Sunday and I left on a Monday. And my Spanish improved like tenfold just from immersing myself in that, like doing that little 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off on Spanish thing. Also just walking around the city, ordering drinks, going to coffee shops, having breakfast, all this sort of stuff, communicating with people, it drastically kind of improved it. It made me realize, oh shit, when you live somewhere and you actually try to communicate with people and speak to people in real life, apart from just like, you know, sitting on Duolingo and reading books and shit, it can really put the language into context um, and actually make you learn it quicker because you're actually you know using it day to day anyway another person says what did you learn in berlin after two years living there obviously not one word of german congratulations another one learn german language and shut up 171 likes wow another one i simply cannot grasp the notion of a cold berlin this city this city breathes tolerance and grants freedom with no other it's here it's in this embrace that i've made my home 
Berlin allows me to live by my own rules, to think and create freely. For 23 years, I've been a part of this vibrant street, surrounded by incredible friends who are dear to my heart and whose love I feel every day. Yo, this guy is really sucking himself off, isn't it? You need to chill, bro. You need to relax. My neighbours are more than just faces. They are part of a community where I feel safe and cherished. In Berlin, I find my breath, my inspiration. It is here that I'm truly myself. Come on, mate. Do over. Give your head a fucking wobble. It's lovely what he's saying, but it sounds fucking nauseating. But I also think he's really not understanding what she's saying. I think this is, makes com complete sense. If you do live in a city that is, you know, um, hyper individual, no, pushes the pushes people to be individuals, it's within reason to expect some people might feel lonely because you're being high, you're being individualistic in some respects, right? When you're kind of striving to kind of discover yourself and to express yourself, you know, true in, you know, whatever way it is, there's going to be the flip side of it where some people are going to feel a little bit isolated, a little bit lonely. It makes complete sense to me. I don't really think it's a slight, just an observation really, to be honest. Another one says, people are not cold, they are honest. They will not pretend to be your friend, but if you earn their friendship, they are the best friends you will have. And I think this is the best comment I've seen. And again, that's probably why it's got the most likes. This is probably more true than anything else people have said, because I think that's one of the bad things about London. We don't have that. We have a lot of like fake warmth, right? Hiya, how are you? How's your day? How, for all that shit. How's your boyfriend? How's your week? All this short, like, you know, just nonsense small talk that no one really gives a fuck about right doesn't really go anywhere not really digging deep into actually knowing you and trying to understand you and build a connection it's just kind of pleasantries um so there's that pretend warmth and then sometimes if you're new you can think that they're actually your friends but they're not and what you realize quickly when you move to the uk there's that thing that's i think most um expats realize when they come here there's that awakening after work so you're at work, you know, you have you have a lot of banter with your colleagues, you're talking at the coffee machine, you're exchanging fucking emojis on fucking Slack, you get lunch together, you're laughing, you're joking, but as soon as it's time to clock off, everyone scurries away like fucking cockroaches when someone opens the door. They all fucking scatter. They don't want to know you at all. You know what I mean? If, even if they're at the same station at you, they fucking turn away. They make it very obvious they don't want to talk to you. It's very interesting because you're like, wow, what, what changed? At work, we were best friends. As soon as you stepped, as soon as it kind of was, was fucking home time, you forgot I fucking existed. And that's the fake sort of like friendship co in the things that exist here in fucking um, in the UK. So it seems like in Berlin, it's the opposite. People aren't cold, they're honest. So if they actually want to be your friend and they think you're cool, they're going to let you know. And then um, obviously because they are really honest or maybe because they're cold, maybe because they have a higher barrier of entry to be somebody's friend there, when you do, you know, jump over those fucking barriers and you earn their trust, they are friend for life, right? I can understand that being a thing too. Once you find people that you share a lot of common, you share a lot of common with, you're not going to let them go. It makes a lot of sense. Another one says, while wow, she really described it so well, resonated with my experience eight years ago. Over the years, Berlin became a happy place because I found myself there. You have to make your own happiness. So well said. Exactly. I believe that. Another one says, Berlin, individual, um, apathetic hell. Everybody claims to be a leftist, but zero solidarity. I want to vomit. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I think there's a lot of solidarity when it comes to protesting because, um, you know, we've seen it so far with the, um, you know, with the fucking um, pro-Palestine protests that they've been having there they've been really turning up so big up everybody um over there in berlin turning up and of course free palestine until the death it continues unfortunately she didn't understand berlin concept of living yes no one gives a fuck how and what lifestyle you have obviously but berlin's are very friendly and open if you need help and of course you can make many friends here just the clubs are probably not the best place to make friends connecting with people in their language will be helpful uh that's at least my experience yes yeah, true that's true um all your friends shouldn't be you know centered around fucking club life that makes a lot of sense but i think to be fair though that's one of the things i liked about that city i think like i think a great city my my mark of a great city because i think london is such a bad city my mark as a great city is that can you have your own little experience without the city imposing things for you to do and i feel like london kind of forces you to go to bars and to restaurants to drink there's no other else no there's no there's not much to do outside of that even benches there's not a lot of benches to sit down and chill out if you unless you go to like places in central london like maybe our art galleries are really good and a lot of them are free but there's not a lot of things to do outside of eating and drinking whereas i feel like in berlin and other great cities you can do loads of things for free in the open that don't revolve around drinking and eating 
And I think that's a marker of a good city where you can go to, you can literally go to Berlin for a weekend and not see a single club and you have a great time, you know, and not have a drop of alcohol and you'd have a great time. I've done it before myself. I think that's possible. I think that's a real marker of a great city. Um, I feel like the Germans haven't been able to keep up culture and friendships, customs like other countries since the wars. <laughs> this Oh, this she's getting deep. Um, and this interpersonal distance resonates through German society. Um, affecting all sorts of people germans are super warm-hearted sensitive people but they crush their culture and maybe this is what is left sorry if this opinion is mega strange i'm half awake and overworked but all in super but all in i super relate to the woman in the video okay interesting perspective another one says um something in german what she's saying here something about language right another train that nobody needs and wants in circle of friends probably not a real berliner but just a lot of i pray them love people jesus man, that's rude that's rude isn't it just a lot of uprooted and unloved people from all over the road <laughs> wow it's, it's good to see what actual german people think of of what actual berliners think of um ravers and stuff people that move there don't learn the language they think of you us all uprooted unloved people <laughs> this one says drugs raves and fucked up lifestyle the whole country is like to describe it come to munich dear to see what to see what's coldness yeah true people say cold, munich is horrible i think munich is like the essex of fucking germany right allegedly um berlin is the worst shithole we need her ted talk so yeah big up her she did amazing i enjoyed it i fucking enjoyed it <laughs> 